able to write on Google Jamboard, if you can. I give the link uh, for Google Jamboard on uh, your WhatsApp as well as on Telegram. So I've got the task here is, can you introduce yourselves? So I've got Samir from 4 account using Google Jamboard already there. Um, I guess I'm monitoring right now. And I've got Al Irfan from 4 account writing his name as well. Anyone from 4KAA who would like to try out the Google Jamboard? Of course, the task will not be just to introduce yourself. I've got other things as well coming up, which is for us to practice um, the degree of formality in our uh, email writing. Okay, so I've got Akiratul there, Samir Al Irfan. I can see Anuraisha entering as well. So all you have to do is you click on this sticker here, write your name, and then where your class is, and then just save it. Okay, and, and then you can actually like organize where you want it to be. You can also change the color of your sticker just to differentiate your answer from other people. Okay, so that's basically how we use the Google Jamboard eh, for the purpose of today's lesson. Okay, so I guess before I proceed, let me just check how many people we have. I believe I have like around 17 people, a combination of 4 KAA and 4 uh, account. So my focus for today, again, I would like to have it repeated, is for us to have a look at last time's um, task. The task that I gave you last time was email of application for a job vacancy. And I'm hoping that today will be our last day of looking at this. The rest of the remaining uh, days in the week, I guess you might want to check out your friends' emails that they have written. For today, we will have a look at a few emails and then we will try and give marks based on my uh, marking scale that I have given to you last time. If you go to your WhatsApp or your Telegram, like for KAA, I gave it to you on Telegram. I believe I gave a PowerPoint for writing a uh, marking scale for SPM. If let's say I haven't done the same for four account, let me just let me know. Maybe I can just uh, insert this writing marking scale um, in on your Delima um, platform. Okay. So if I open it right now, it will be very beneficial for you to determine how the marking is done for SPM. Since I have already done this uh, with you last time, would anyone like to tell me what are the four criteria that we look at for the marking of your SPM writing paper? Can I have uh, anyone let me know what's the four criteria for SPM marking paper? What are the things that SPM markers look at when they mark your um, writing SPM paper? Would anyone like to tell me what they remember? Um, probably can I get Akilatul, give me one criteria. Content. Content. How many marks for content? Five. Full. Okay, full marks for content would be five. Um, if I if I ask you about language, for example, eh, Akilatul, just to see whether you remember or not. When we talk about language, what are some of the things that are important for language? Do you remember the slide that I gave? If we look at language, what's important for language? Apa yang penting for language, if you can tell me. So, Akhilatul said just now what one of the criteria would be content. Content saya rasa sangat jelas, isi. We look at content, kalau soalan minta, um, last time soalan minta a job vacancy, awak jawab a job vacancy, full marks for content eh. Okay. Um, I asked you just now about language. Language, kita tengok grammar dan juga vocabulary awak tinggi ke tidak. So right now we are going to have a look. I think we will start by looking at um, example emails that you have written first. Then I will go back to Google Jamboard exercise untuk kita practice uh, formal writing dengan informal writing. And probably today I'll just uh, end 
uh, for this writing uh, exercise. Eh? Okay, so if we look at your emails that you have sent, okay, so among the emails that uh, I have received on Padlet uh, would be email from Samir, uh, Alia Amani, Nur Alia Iman, I've also got from Nur Fahira. Some of them, we have had a look at it last time. Kita dah tengok last time, kita dah bagi markah pun. For example, I believe last time we gave marks for, uh, let me just check again eh. Siapa yang kita dah bagi markah last time? I believe it was a full mark, kalau tak silap saya. Is it Nur Alia Iman last time? Oh, okay. So, yes. If we look at one example right now, last time kita dah check uh, Nur Alia Iman and we gave her 20 out of 20 for everything. So kita bagi content 5 markah, communicative achievement 5 markah, organization 5 marks, language 5 marks. So for today kita akan tengok orang lain pula. We will be having a look at other people's um, essays. By the way, um, for people who haven't sent it yet, sila hantar. If I could just uh, inform eh, for account students, saya nak just uh, give some information here that uh, after this, kalau boleh, since it's going to be a long PDPR, probably until September, we never know what's going to happen currently in our situation. So probably uh, what I would like you to do, saya akan bina satu folder untuk for account eh, right now. This is on my Google Drive. Later, saya akan bagi password dan juga email. So, I'm building one for four account 2021. I am creating one folder right now. I hope you can see it. Saya colorkan right now. So, I'll color it green, for example. Okay, green is similar with 5 Pro. Uh, probably, let's just have another color. Okay, orange eh, for four account. If you want to change it later on, you can change it. Okay, so I've built a Google Drive. I hope you can see. I'm trying to make it larger. So this is a Google Drive for work to be submitted. Dengar dengan baik eh. Okay, work will be submitted on Google Drive. If I open 4KAA right now. Uh, okay, jaga-jaga 4KAA. So, if I open 4KA right now, I have uh, written their names so Saya dah letak nama masing-masing. And then if I open, I can open anyone of course. Okay, so if I open like for example Akila Tul here. So, all her work for English will be in her folder. Okay, cara untuk awak masukkan tugasan ni, I will give you this uh, what you need, simple saja. all you need adalah Gmail untuk awak masuk dekat Google Drive and then password untuk awak masuk dekat Google Drive and automatic you dah boleh upload bahan. Okay, so what I will do is I will later on give you this Gmail dan juga password. You masuk, enter the Google Drive and then awak masuk for, uh, for account punya folder enter the four account folder and then build. Okay, saya buat seorang punya eh. So that uh, after this yang lain boleh follow. Okay, just build a new folder. Dekat dalam four account punya folder tadi. Okay, sorry. Bukan build a new folder. Uh, kita buat folder upload. Let's try and uh, okay, new folder here. Okay, new folder, awak tekan new folder. Contoh I have uh, Samir lah contohnya. Samir for account. Nanti awak ubah balik eh. Can you please change it so that you can uh, write your full name? Because I do not have access to your full name yet. Okay, so Samir for account and then we create. So in this for account folder, kalau saya pergi balik semula, in my for account folder, saya buka for account. I've already got Samir for account sebab saya baru bina tadi. I click new and then I click folder. Let's say I want to try another person's name. Alia Amani eh. For account. Nanti you, you put your own real name later on eh. So I've created two folders right now. 
For example, right now I can change the color for Alia Amani pink. Samir, let's just have change color green contohnya. So all you have to do is you masuk kat dalam you punya folder and all the work yang you dah pernah buat before this, just insert it in your folder. It will be a bit more organized dan senang untuk kita saya nak bagi markah pentaksiran bilik darjah okay, for final year. We have markah pentaksiran bilik darjah. Tahap penilaian paling tinggi will be six. Tahap penilaian paling rendah will be one. Saya rasa awak pun dah tahu, you know that. So where do I search for your work? Saya akan buka Google Drive. Alright, so after this, if possible, cuba dulu try out first and build this folder. Okay, so for example right now, Okay, another thing that you can do untuk pelajar 4KA and 4 account, you open your own folder later on. 4, 4 account mungkin belum boleh buat lagi benda ni. But 4KA, you dah boleh buat like your seniors here. Actually, you boleh buka semua orang punya folder. Okay, if you want to have a look at what budak 5 Pro dah buat, you can actually open. You nak tengok karangan budak 5 Pro, you dah boleh buka. Okay, so if you want to have a look at a more organized one, and you yourself boleh organize your own folder. Uh, for example, saya buka Nur Fazirahani 5SK3. So what she has done is, dia dah uh, organize mengikut skill dalam bahasa Inggeris. Writing task ada satu folder. Speaking task ada satu folder. Mungkin later on she can build re listening task boleh letak satu folder. So kalau kita buka writing task, all her Google document, karangan semua ada dalam folder writing. So later on, when you want to study for SPM, it will be a bit more organized. Okay, dia lebih tersusun untuk awak buat study revision awak for SPM. Since currently kita tak pakai buku, we are not using a book. Okay, so that would be a bit of information about Google Drive. For account, saya akan bagi, I will give you this Gmail and password. Actually, if you want to screenshot it right now pun, supaya it's much more efficient or tak payah tunggu saya, you can have this screenshot and then you can just enter Google Drive. Pergi dekat Google, search Google Drive and masuk guna Gmail and password ni. Automatically you boleh access tadi folder yang saya buat tadi untuk pelajar for account. Okay? Alright. Any questions you can actually like ask dekat chat or you can actually just turn on your microphone and ask me immediately. Okay, so no questions for now eh. Tak ada soalan eh. Alright, I'm going to go back to the um, email that you have sent. Okay, so I will just go to Padlet first. This will be the Padlet last time. Access kepada Padlet ada dekat D5. Ada juga Padlet yang saya hantar pada WhatsApp. So hopefully awak find your way into getting the materials. Eh? Okay, so right now I'll go to one person's email. Okay, I've got one email here yang saya memang dah settle nak buka already. I've got Al Irfan. So I'm going to um, jump from one uh, one essay from 4KAA and then one essay from 4 account, one essay from 4KAA and then we'll see berapa permarkahan yang kita nak buat. Okay, this would be from Al Irfan. I don't think Al Irfan sent to me using a Google document. So I might have to just use the screen sajalah. Kita pakai screen ni saja. Eh. So this is as far as I can make it large. Okay, so if we have a look at the uh, oh, uh, one piece of writing, of course, kalau awak pergi dekat saya punya um, scale yang saya dah bagi, kita akan tengok like content, kita akan tengok communicative achievement, we will have a look at organization dan juga language. Berapa markah yang kita nak bagi for every single um, criteria here. Okay, I'll have a look at Al-Irfan first here. Uh, Al-Irfan, do you mind uh, reading your own email? To be presented to other people? Is Al-Irfan there? Yes. Okay, so I'll just open your, your email and then can you try and get me just a reading first of this email and then we want to help you with the language. You start from dear Mr. or Mrs. Eh? Dear Mr. or Miss, I am writing this email for apply the position of 
pharmaceutical and advice on the website search work, search for work dot com. I am twenty two years old in my final year of degree at University Sign Islam Malaysia. I believe that in my position right now, I suitable for the position that offered by the website because I have all the necessary quali qualification. For example, I am expert on using a computer. Furthermore, I am quite fluent in Malay and English language as well. And I also available for available to work in during a weekend. In addition, I also have previous experience working as a cashier at grocery store. I acknowledge myself to be a trustworthy while I'm doing my work. In the same time, I am adept in communication while dealing with customer. Please inform me if you have any information regarding my application. I am I am available for an interview at your convenience. I am honored to hearing any feedback from you. Your faithfully Al Irfan. All right, thank you Al Irfan. Okay, probably what I like about Al Irfan here is that he's quite a diligent student. You know, everything is everything I give so far has been. Um, done quite well, and then um, you are always first, eh, Alifan in everything. Enter the class, pon first. Uh, hantar tugasan, pon first. So that's a good attitude. However, definitely Alifan needs our help. Okay, so what we can do here is we are going to sort of like detect first what are some of the things that need help, especially in terms of language. Okay. So, Probably what I can help you out first adalah dari segi sebutan dulu eh, Al Irfan. Um, if we go one by one, first paragraph here, I believe that uh, you probably need to check the pronunciation for farmer, siu, macam mana kita nak sebut ni? Did you check? Check tak? As well as perkataan A-D-V-E-R-T-I-S-E-D ni. Okay, so if we can just uh, do it together right now. Okay. Farmer, see you, and then ejaan dia like that eh. Okay, so you need to definitely, if it's a new word, kalau dia adalah perkataan baru, um, kita kena check definitely dekat, okay, I'll just get the definition first eh. Pharmaceutique. Pharmaceutique and apparently it is, uh, sounds French. Mungkin dia datang daripada French origin. So, pharmaceutique. Pharmaceutique. There. Okay, so I was just going to check the pronunciation so that kalau let's say you want to talk about your dream profession for speaking examination, you dah tahu macam mana cara nak sebut. Okay, so going back to your email just now. Okay, th this one, this word here, pharmaceutique. And then this word here, as advertised. Okay, seperti yang diiklankan as advertised. So you just take note of it and then try to remember. Eh? Okay, other than that, second paragraph. Second paragraph, I believe you can check um, necessary qualifications. Okay, I am an expert. Okay, kerja lagi saya kena betulkan banyak actually here dari segi preposition. So kita akan bincang satu-satu. Okay, right now I'm just going to going through your pronunciation dulu eh. Okay, um, I think I heard you say I am honored tadi. So untuk perkataan saya rasa bangga, saya rasa um, honored here, saya rasa seperti diberi penghormatan. I am honored. You tak payah sebut pun H dia. H dia tak bunyi pun. So I am honored to hear any feedback from you. Okay, by the way, since sekarang ni Al Irfan did not send me guna Google document, saya tak boleh nak tunjuk editing. But what I want uh, other students to help out with adalah dari segi language yang Al Irfan guna eh. Pay attention sebab saya akan tanya awak. I'm not going to correct it myself but I will ask you. Okay, kita tengok daripada first uh, paragraph. I am writing this email for apply the position of pharmaceutic. Saya nak awak betulkan satu preposition. Preposition ni maksudnya apa? Um, there are prepositions like in, on, under, of, at. Semua tu adalah preposition. Kadang-kadang dia menunjukkan kedudukan. Okay. So right now preposition mana yang salah? 
can I ask um, your friends? Probably students in 4KA ataupun students in 4 account. Betul kan R. Irfan punya preposition for the first sentence? Anyone would like to help? I am writing this email for apply the position of pharmaceutic. Preposition dia yang mana yang salah? Anyone would like to help? Saya ingin menulis email ini untuk memohon jawatan. So yang mana yang salah actually? For. For. Okay so who's that? Siapa tu? Akila. Akila tolong betulkan the full sentence Akila. Everything. I am. I am writing this email to apply the position of pharmaceutic as advertised on the website search for searchforward.com. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so Akila has helped our friend there just now. I am writing this email to apply for the position of pharmaceutic. Dapat tak Ali Fan? Do you get it? So awak punya for ni kedudukan dia salah dan awak tertinggal perkataan to. So I am right, saya ulang eh. I am writing this email to apply for the position of pharmaceutic. Dapat atau tidak Al Irfan? Dapat tak? Yes. Okay, do you mind? Sebab saya tak boleh nak edit you punya ni because you hantar ke I dalam bentuk PDF I think. So you edit balik your own work. Do you mind sending it back lepas kita dah betulkan? Can we yes. do that? Okay. Okay. So right now we get we are going to have a look at the second paragraph. Tadi Akila, Akila dah tolong awak. So right now mungkin kita boleh have four account student, your own classmate pula tolong. Let's see what we can help you with. Okay. I am 22 years old in my final year of degree at University Science Islam Malaysia. Okay. Clear. Sentence tu tak ada masalah. I believe that in my position right now, I suitable for the position. Sila bantu Al Irfan who would like to help me. I am. Okay, so who's that? Marsha. Okay, Marsha, uh, classmate for for account for Al Irfan lah eh. Okay, your own classmate eh. So I am suitable Al Irfan. Okay, so what we can do adalah I think you can um practice using, okay if I use the classroom screen right now eh. Okay, let me just use this classroom screen. You can tahu in English, okay, give it a few seconds. In English, we have, okay, I'll just use the text here. We have a few helping verbs. Okay, I'll just show you right now. Helping verb ni apa? What is a helping verb? If let's say you feel like nota yang saya bagi right now, you perlukan, you screenshot later on eh. Helping verbs in English eh. Okay, let's just drill this with you right now. Let's see whether you tahu semua helping verbs. Saya rasa awak tahu. It's just that nak guna tu je sometimes you tak berapa jelas. Okay. Kalau kita kata I, dia mesti ada I am. Kalau kita kata she, apa boleh tolong? She apa? I am. She? Is. She is. Okay. Kalau kita kata he, he is. He is. If we say um we ah uh. we are. Okay. That one adalah untuk present tense. Saya bagi satu lagi. Let's just try one more. Okay. One more would be they. Sebenarnya ada banyak lagi actually. Sikit. Uh, when we're talking about I, she, he, we, they, semua ni adalah kata ganti diri. Dalam bahasa Inggeris kita panggil pronouns. Kata ganti diri. So selepas kata ganti diri, you mesti ada helping verb. Helping verb ni adalah kata kerja untuk membantu you punya kata ganti diri tu supaya berdiri lah. Okay, you can actually make it um stand in a sentence. Okay, so they, they apa? Kalau they, they are. They are. Okay, itu adalah untuk present tense. Kalau awak bercakap sekarang, then you akan cakap they are. Tapi, if we talk about past tense eh. I was. She? She? Was. Was. He? Past tense? Was. Was. We? Were. Were. 
Okay, so sebenarnya benda ni awak dah tahu, you already know but it's just about applying saja. Awak boleh apply atau tidak. So they? Were. They were. Okay, so that's ini yang Alifan tertinggal. Was, were, uh, I am. So dia tak ada benda tu. Actually dia, dia buat, dia buat uh, kali kedua. Kita check balik semula eh. Okay, so just now dia tertinggal I am suitable for the position that was offered on the website. Okay, so siapa yang offer kerja tu? Bukan ke, uh, website yang offer kerja tapi dia telah di offer pada website tersebut. Okay, so uh, take note again eh, saya ulang. I believe that in my position right now, I am suitable for the position that is offered ataupun was offered on the website because I have all the necessary qualifications. For example, I am an expert in using the computer. So sekarang masalah kat sini adalah banyak berkenaan dengan um, preposition. Okay, nampak tak? I am an expert in using the computer. Okay, so Kak Alifah nanti boleh betulkan sikit eh. Okay, furthermore, I am quite fluent in Malay and English language as well. And I also available. Siapa boleh tolong Alifan kat sini? I? I also available. Apa yang tertinggal? Um. Help, okay, helping verb dia tertinggal. I am also available to work during a weekend. Okay, ni yang masalah sikit dari segi tak, uh, you tak consistent tau. You kata a. Uh. Tapi weekendnya ada banyak. So what you have to do is during the weekend, during the weekends, kalau nak letak S, letak the. Tapi kalau nak kata during a weekend, tak payah ada S. Sebab a kan satu. Kenapa weekend dia ada S, tak payah ada S. Is that clear? Okay, so actually banyak problem with language lah for this one here. So kalau kita nak bagi markah kejap lagi, kita akan turunkan for language marks. Okay, third paragraph. Okay, ada soalan tak setakat ni? Do we have any question? Setakat yang saya dah betulkan tadi? Okay, so I hope the the writer, the writer himself, Al-Irfan, you, you boleh uh, take note of the correction. Yang mana tak faham, you kena tanya. You have to ask. Sebab saya boleh bagi information. Tapi awak boleh jadi info. In at a grocery store. Okay, when we are talking about a, the, okay, saya buat satu lagi nota eh. Tadi awak dah ada nota about helping verb. This one. Okay, now let's have another one. Satu lagi yang awak kena, nampaknya awak tak berapa uh, mahir lagi is uh, article. Okay, article ni apa? What are articles? Okay, I'll just write the note here. Articles ada beberapa sahaja, tak banyak pun. A. Artikel. Okay. So just now in your email. Grocery store. Tapi you tertinggal dia punya artikel. Cakap saya pernah bekerja di sebuah grocery store contohnya. Satu, satu. Sebuah ataupun uh, ikut awak lah penjodoh bilangan apa yang sesuai bahasa Melayu. But untuk bahasa Inggeris, you perlukan a kat depan dia. I've previous working experience at a grocery store. Okay, masa bila guna N? When do we use N? A, E, I, O, U. Okay, whenever there, whenever the word start dengan A, E, I, O, U, then you use N. Can you give me an example of a place? Since we're talking about grocery store tadi, kalau a place yang start dengan N, apa yang awak nak, nak uh, bagi contoh? What example can you give me? University. N University. Um, somehow, untuk university, kita tak guna N. University kita pakai a university. I have studied at a university before. Probably sebab 
bunyi dia you dengar bunyi dia u tau bukan u Okay, so you dengar bunyi dia Y. So almost like starting with Y. So kita akan dengar bunyi tau. Dia bukan ejaan. We don't follow the spelling but rather the sound. Sama juga macam contohlah if let's say I give you an example and M sorry and hour eh. Although this is not a place tapi and hour kerana bunyi dia bunyi seperti O yang start dulu Then kita guna N kat depan. Dia bukan ikut ejaan tapi dia ikut bunyi. Is that clear? So an hour, an aeroplane. Jadi kalau tempat an empty space, contohnya an empty space. So you akan ambil bunyi dia of the first word after N. Okay, bila pula nak pakai the, usually untuk the kalau the first time awak sebut, you takkan guna the. Tapi kalau it's the second time you sebut benda tu, you akan guna the. Contoh, I have been to Tower Bridge. Kat belakang ni gambar ni. In London, I have been to Tower Bridge. The Tower Bridge is beautiful. Awak nak rujuk kembali kepada apa yang awak dah cakap pasal Tower Bridge tadi, baru awak guna the. Um, lagi satu, bila nak guna the adalah if it's your first time. Kalau first time awak sebut, awak guna the. The sun. And lagi satu, if there's only one of it only, the moon, the sky. Kalau ada satu je, awak akan gunakan the kat depan dia. Setakat ni jelas tak? This would be article. Nama dia adalah article. So apa yang Alirfan tertinggal tadi adalah article kat sini. In addition, I also have previous experience working as a cashier at a grocery store. Sebab kalau tak ada memang it looks very uh, weird sebab dia tertinggal artikel kat situ. Okay. Okay. I acknowledge myself to be a trustworthy. Uh, apa yang tertinggal ni? What is missing here? Siapa boleh tolong? Who can help me? I acknowledge myself to be a trustworthy what? Apa yang trustworthy kat sini? Trustworthy ni maksudnya di boleh dipercayai. Tapi siapa yang boleh dipercayai? What is missing? Siapa boleh tolong? Ya? Yeah? People. People eh. Okay, people ramai. Alifah ada seorang je. Person. Yes. So it should have been the word person kat sini. Okay. I acknowledge myself to be a trustworthy person while I am doing my work. So kat sini as you can see, jenis-jenis kesalahan yang dibuat adalah number one tadi kita nampak dia tertinggal helping verb. Nota kita ada kat sini. Helping verb. I am. Yang kedua dia ada masalah dengan artikel tertinggal. A grocery store. Dan yang ketiga yang you nampak kat sini adalah tertinggal perkataan terus. I I consider myself, I acknowledge myself to be a trustworthy person. Dia tertinggal perkataan person. Okay. So uh, nama kesalahan tersebut adalah omission. Omission maksudnya ter tinggal perkataan tu dan dia dianggap kesalahan yang besar lah sebenarnya. Okay. Okay. So to be a trustworthy person while I am doing my work. Okay. Uh, next one adalah masalah preposition. Do you say in the same time ataupun ada preposition yang lain yang lebih sesuai? Pada waktu yang sama, how do you say it? Can I get anyone to respond? Pada waktu yang sama. How do you say it? In the same time ke? At the same time. At the same time. Okay. So at the same time. Sebenarnya it's not in tapi adalah at. Okay. Untuk preposition saya faham kita orang Melayu. Kita tak guna sangat our preposition in our speaking. Saya rasa even for me myself I need to um, still improve in terms of the use of preposition. Sebab preposition ni kadang-kadang kita rasa macam dah sedap dah but it doesn't, it's not correct. So untuk bantu awak dari segi preposition, kita kena ada a whole new lesson pasal preposition sahaja. Okay maybe one day I'll try to have that done. Okay so untuk this one, it should be at the same time. I am adept in communication while dealing with customer. Sila letak S pada customer sebab customer awak confirm takkanlah seorang sahaja. Okay. Dapat eh? So customer letak S. Okay and then at the same time sila betulkan. Okay last paragraph. 
please inform me if you have any information regarding my application. I am available for an interview at your convenience. I am honoured to hear any feedback from you. Hear ni awak buang ING. The only time yang saya benarkan awak guna uh, ING selepas tu adalah oh. masa kekarangan kawan awak. I looking forward to meeting you. Itu betul. Tapi kalau yang this one, I am honoured to hear any feedback from you. Sila buang ING awak. Okay and then last one, yours faithfully. Sila letak S pada your. Sila letak S pada your. Okay. Okay. So right now, okay, uh, what we are going to do is kita akan, akan, akan bagi markah. We are going to give a mark kepada uh, Alirfan's uh, email just now. Kita akan start dengan content dahulu eh. Okay, markah content. Markah content simple saja. Apa kehendak soalan itu yang dia jawab. That's the mark for content. Kehendak soalan adalah write an email to apply for the post. Itu saja kehendak soalan. And then you kena tengok balik kalau kehendak soalan kata you kena ada computer skill then dalam karangan awak kena cakap pasal computer skill. Kalau you kata you mesti fluent in Malay in your email, you can cakap you fluent in Malay. Previous working experience will be an advantage you sebut dalam you punya email. I believe Ali Irfan has done that. Everything yang kehendak uh, advertisement ni, kehendak pada iklan, dia masukkan dalam email then no problem content memang boleh lima. Okay, content five out of five. Next one. After content, kita akan tengok markah apa? Communicative achievement. Kau oh, tengok slide saya ni right now and answer my question eh. The question asked Al Irfan to write an email. Did he write an email? Yes or no? Sila jawab. The question asked Al Irfan to write an email. Did he write an email? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay, kalau dia tulis an email and then he manages to give some intelligent ideas and then he has clearly explained his ideas, then dia layak dapat lima. He deserves five marks for communicative achievement. So we go back to his email just now. Tiga perkara tu eh. Kita tanya diri kita, adakah ini satu email? That's one question. Yang kedua, adakah idea dia intelligent? Yang ketiga, adakah um, dia explain secara clearly about himself untuk apply for the position. So I'm thinking with this email here, although ada masalah language, he can still get a four or five for communicative achievement. Sebab dia faham soalan nakkan email dan email tersebut perlu dalam language yang formal. Formal maksudnya rasmi. Kita kan dah ada buat latihan tentang formal language and informal language. So dia dah gunakan perkataan yang rasmi. Macam mana saya tahu dia guna perkataan rasmi? Position. In my position right now. Um, I have previous working experience. I am adept in communication. I am writing this email to apply for the position. So itu semua akan menunjukkan pada saya, oh okay, dia faham bahawa dia kena tulis email kepada seorang um, company uh, CEO contohnya to apply for a job. So saya boleh bagi dia empat atau lima untuk communicative achievement. So markah yang tinggi lah untuk communicative achievement eh. Okay next one what we look at adalah organization. Adakah dia susun idea dia? Okay if you look at uh, the email given by Al Irfan, kita tahu dia susun because kita ada paragraphing. You have paragraphs. Paragraph number one is to uh, tell me the reason why this email has been written. Paragraph number two is to give some information about his background details. Paragraph number three is to talk about his previous experience. Then dia gunakan penanda wacana. In addition. Okay. So kita nampaklah. For example. Furthermore. Semua tu, uh, perkataan tersebut will give you marks for organisation. Jelas eh? So make sure bila awak tulis awak punya karangan, make sure you have some cohesive devices ataupun penanda wacana. Macam mana nak drilling untuk penanda wacana? Tengoklah email kawan-kawan yang dah hantar ni. Kawan-kawan awak ramai dah hantar email dah already. 
read their emails and belajar daripada orang lain. That's one way as well that you can learn. Okay. Okay. So untuk organisation full marks 5 per 5 um, ataupun 4 per 5 dalam tangan. Okay. So it's just uh, within reach you boleh capai definitely. So problemnya tinggal satu je right now. The problem is the language. Okay. If you look at the marking for language kat sini, you kena tepat grammar. Your grammar has to be accurate, then you can get a five. Okay, kalau awak nak screenshot uh, this particular slide, you can do that. Tapi saya dah bagi, eh? I've already given PowerPoint dalam PowerPoint version. Kalau four account saya belum bagi, nanti I'll give to you on WhatsApp. Okay, so kita akan tengok grammar mesti tepat, vocabulary mesti tinggi. Actually, vocabulary Al Irfan tadi tinggi. Okay, you have used high level words. Kalau nak ikutkan high level words. Macam mana saya tahu high level words? Awak guna perkataan pharmaceutics. Awak guna perkataan advertised. Awak guna perkataan position, necessary, qualification. Tinggi tau you punya language. Tapi problemnya adalah pada grammar. Tata bahasa awak tak master lagi. Okay, so probably saya takkan bagi lima. Probably is either a three or a four. Tiga atau empat. So kat situ setiap kriteria mungkin awak hilang dalam satu markah lah. Kecuali content dapat penuh dan juga organisation dapat penuh lima markah. So kalau awak kira-kira balik lah tadi eh. Marks for Al Irfan. Content five. Communicative achievement let's have um four out of five. So that's nine. Organisation five. That's fourteen. Language. Mungkin language dalam tiga atau empat. Let's say lah awak dapat empat. Okay. So 14 plus 4, eight, uh, probably you hilang dalam dua markah lah. For the overall. Okay. So that's how we give the marks for everything. Dalam awak punya satu piece of writing tu. Ini ini bercakap tentang email saja. Eh. Email adalah part one of your writing. I believe by now awak dahu you have three parts of your writing. I'll just show you another slide. You ada tiga bahagian eh. Just take note that you have three writing yang you kena buat untuk SPM. Last time saya tunjuk dekat awak skrip daripada pelajar yang sebenar dan permarkahan yang diberi. Okay so if we just go back kepada what are some of the things yang you kena tulis. Okay I'll give you an example script terus. Okay part one will usually be an email. We have discussed this email last time eh. Part 1 biasanya email. Email yang saya bagi tugasan kat awak adalah formal email. Tapi email yang saya tunjuk uh, contoh ni this one is an informal email. Awak kena tahu whether your email is formal or not supaya awak dapat achieve markah untuk communicative achievement. Kalau sepatutnya friendly, kena bagi ayat yang friendly. Kalau sepatutnya serious macam kita buat untuk email for application ni, you kena bagi language yang serious. Then kat situ markah akan dapat. Okay, so part one for your writing will be email writing. Biasanya 80 perkataan. 80 words only. Masa yang awak ada dalam 30 minit eh. 30 minutes. Sebab setiap karangan sepatutnya awak spend 30 minutes. The only thing is that setiap karangan berbeza bilangan perkataan. So you kena pandai-pandai manage. Okay, so part one will be 80 words and usually it will be email. Ni saya pergi kepada overview eh. Part two. Okay, this is an example for part two. Okay, part two last time kita tak bincangkan. Can I just some, uh, have some um, feedback from you? I think part two last time saya tak tunjuk kat awak kan slide ni. Did I show you this one? Yes or no? No. I believe, okay I believe not. Okay, so this is uh, overview. Overview ni maksudnya kita tengok secara generalnya untuk SPM apa benda yang awak kena tulis. Part one awak kena tulis email. Part two, you are going to be given a guided essay. Ini kita panggil guided writing. Guided maksudnya, dia bagi awak soalan. Okay, soalan this one adalah about how you would spend money. Lepas tu dia bagi awak bullet point. What you would like to buy, reasons for your choice, where do you usually buy these things? And then awak kena write your essay. Okay, so uh, dia tak bagi number of words for this particular essay but usually pada exam paper awak dia akan bagi. Um, it's definitely more than 80 words. Guided writing lebih daripada 80 perkataan eh. Okay, so this will be part two. 
And if you notice kalau awak perasan part 2 ni the topic comes from your textbook. It is about shopping. It is from your textbook. So definitely check out topics daripada textbook. Our SPM topics will come from textbook. Okay. Okay so task untuk part 2 uh, guided writing. Actually saya ada contoh example uh, script yang mana for that question. Maybe we can have a look at that later. For this question pelajar yang tulis ni this script here. Oh tengok eh. Script tu yang ini. Maka dia penuh. 5, 5, 5, 5. So what I can do for you is kalau awak nak if you want to I'll give you the script. Example script dan juga permarkahan yang penanda buat. Kenapa dia dapat 5? Why did that student get 5? Kita boleh bincangkan later on. Kalau awak perlukan slide you can just uh, sama ada screenshot this ataupun nanti ask from me. Awak kena minta daripada saya eh, supaya saya I, I remember to give you. Okay. So that would be part 2 and then I'll go to part 3 sebagai overview dulu. Okay part 3. I think for KAA you dah, you dah biasa kalau part 3 ni apa yang mungkin keluar? What can come out for part 3? This is, an, this is an example thing that can come out. Writing a story. Kita dah buat belum for KAA? Writing a story. Have we done this before? Have you done writing a story before with me? Do you remember? Yes or no? No. No? Are you sure? Itu 4KA ke? Is that 4KA student? Yang cakap no tadi? Who's that? Itu yang ada. Do you remember 4KA whether you... Huh? Have you done a story before? Yes. Okay, for account. Okay, for account, have you done a story before? No. Da dah pernah no. tulis story tak? Oh, okay, belum. Okay, for KAA, have you done a story before? Nabila, have you done a story yes. before? Iza, ah, pernah. Dah pernah dah. You dah pernah buat dah story before. Okay, nanti for account, kalau awak nak tengok example of stories uh, yang for KAA buat dan juga yang ditulis oleh senior-senior pada tahun ini, saya bagi satu padlet, you dah boleh baca. Okay, sebab story ni menarik actually kalau nak tulis. But untuk part 3, other than story, apa lagi yang boleh keluar? What else can come out? Selain daripada story. Do you know or do you remember? Apa yang kita pernah buat dalam kelas 4K? Awak pernah buat artikel tak? Have you done an article before? Yes. 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 You memang pernah. Awak dah banyak tulis sebenarnya but you don't remember. Okay so you have written an article before. Itu mungkin keluar dekat part 3. You have written a story before. Mungkin keluar dekat part 3 as well. As, and then you pernah tulis what else? Eh? Um, I, I don't remember whether you pernah tulis review but review can come out dekat part 3 as well. Review ni apa? Contoh product review. Okay. You nak pilih laptop ke? You nak pilih PC computer? So that's a review. Bagi you punya uh, feedback. That's a re review. Contohnya kalau you pernah pergi kat hotel. Hotel A ke bagus, hotel B ke bagus. Give your review. So that would be a review. Okay, kita bagi some feedback about bagus ke tak tempat tu. Okay, another review that can come out adalah movie review. Movie review eh. Bagus tak movie awak tengok tu? Kenapa awak kata bagus? So that would be some example examples of reviews that can come out. Tapi untuk part 3 ni, you just gonna remember nama part 3 adalah um, extended writing. What it means by extended writing adalah karangan tersebut perlulah uh, sedikit panjang sikit daripada karangan yang lain. The number of words untuk part 3 usually sepatutnya lebih banyak. Tapi you kena tahu markah sama je. Part 1, 20 markah. Part 2, 20 markah. Part 3 pun 20 markah. So you sendiri kena pandai bajet. Macam mana you nak make sure that setiap essay awak dapat 20 markah. Okay, so this one is an example. The title is A Dream Comes True and it is a story. You should include a description of your dream and then you should tell how the dream is achieved. Saya nak tanya 4 KAA. Kita pernah buat tak pasal dream-dream ni? Have you done it already? Have you done this topic about dream before? Sebelum ni kita bincang apa? Dream apa yang kita bincang? What did we discuss last time? A dream? Profession. Yes. Actually, kalau awak uh, aware, 
whatever that you do for speaking contohnya last time i gave you this topic tentang speaking kan untuk buat speaking actually what you whatever that you practice untuk speaking you can apply in your writing that's why every task yang saya bagi semua akan menjurus kepada you nak jawab exam tu tak kiralah skill apa skill untuk uh, writing ke skill untuk listening ke actually kalau speaking pun boleh apply juga pada writing So siapa yang dah practice, siapa yang dah hantar kat saya you punya speaking last time, you boleh terus uh, buat this essay dengan mudah sebab you dah ada words in your mind. You dah tahu dah apa dream you. You dah tahu dah macam mana you nak achieve your dream sebab memang saya tanya soalan dekat dalam you punya speaking last time. Okay. Okay so I've got some examples here. This is an example of a script tapi the, the thing about this script adalah language marks dia kosong. So probably in the next lesson kita boleh bincangkan kenapa language marks dia kosong kan dia tulis. This person wrote something but the person received zero for language, two for content, one for communicative achievement, one for organization. So you kena tahu kenapa dia dapat kosong supaya you boleh elakkan. You don't want to get zero. You don't want to get low marks. Okay for your writing paper. Alright, so that would be regarding uh, marking eh. Itu berkenaan dengan penandaan. So just now, probably Al Irfan punya paper here, he can get like around 17 or to, uh, 18 marks for overall. Kalau kita ambil kira kesemua kriteria tadi. Content, communicative achievement, organization, dan juga language mungkin markah Alirfan dalam 17 to 18 out of 20. Dia akan hilang dalam 2 atau 3 markah disebabkan oleh language. That is why you can practice for language. Okay. Okay. So we have like around 2 more minutes. Okay. Before the lesson ends. We end at 9 a.m. So what I would like you to do if let's say you belum pernah bu buat lagi this email. Uh, sila hantar email awak sama ada dekat Google Drive. Okay, this would be, okay, I'll just go to our 5 Pro, 5 PMK punya Google Drive and Google Drive yang awak akan uh, masukkan bahan. Okay, okay uh, saya just nak pesan untuk 4 KAA student. Buka folder awak, open your folders. Um, By the way, saya tahu kalau let's say it's it's uh, still, there's nothing in there, I, I know. Sebab tak berwarna ni, most probably there's nothing in there. Okay, if you have coloured it, most probably there's something in there. Okay, so uh, 4KA, do you mind? Boleh tak awak cuba untuk organize macam saya tunjuk sini awak buat tadi. Build new folders. Buat folder baru. Satu untuk writing, satu untuk speaking, satu untuk listening, satu untuk reading. Okay, so in the next lesson kita boleh fokus kepada skill lain. Tapi awak susun dulu you punya task sebab awak nak prepare for SPM in 2023. You've got some time untuk awak penuhkan awak punya folders so that you have a lot of uh, materials untuk awak buat revision before SPM. Okay, so tolong susun awak punya tugasan mengikut skill. If you can do that for me, that would be nice. Okay, and then for four account student, I will give you the um, password as well as the um, Gmail. Awak boleh masuk your Google Drive and start filling in your folder. Masukkan bahan dalam folder eh. Write your name um, on one folder and then masukkan awak punya bahan. If you want to have a look at macam mana 4K A buat, boleh buka dia orang punya folder. Awak nanti boleh buka lah siapa yang ada tugasan, siapa yang tak ada, you will like definitely know. Okay, buka salah satu folder and just see what they have got in there supaya awak tahu okay, how do I organize my folder. Okay, ada soalan tak? Do we have any questions so far? So tugasan untuk 4KA student, organize your folders according to skill. Kita ada empat skill saja: writing, reading, listening, speaking. Organize your your folder. Untuk 4 account, start uploading your work on Google Drive before our next lesson. Is that possible? Rasa-rasa boleh buat? Is it possible yeah. to be done? Boleh eh? So I'll be checking. Saya akan monitor. I will monitor on the uh, Google Drive folder who has done it and who hasn't. Saya akan tahu. I will know. So, saya akan buka your Google Drive folder untuk saya bagi markah pentaksiran bilik darjah. If your Google Drive folder is empty, kosong, so probably markah paling tinggi saya boleh bagi adalah TP2 sahaja. 
tahap penilaian dua sahaja. Okay, that's that's just uh, a reminder for you. Okay, that's all for today. Kita pun dah exceed the time. Okay, uh, thank you for joining my class. I'll see you in the next lesson and have a good day trying to organize your Google Drive. Okay? Okay, that's all for today. Assalamualaikum and thank you very much everyone. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. All right, thank you. Thank you, teacher. Teacher. Oh, yes. Um, Pergi Google Drive dulu, lepas tu sign in guna Gmail yang teacher bagi tu kan? Yes, kalau okay, you buka you punya um, this, you punya Google, just open your Google. You nampak kan ni, ni uh, this one, this icon here, Google Drive kan? Right? Yes. Like, okay, like me right now, dia dah automatically masuk tau because I already have myself signed in. But you nanti, you kena try and click at tepi ni and then probably you kena enter, add another account ke and then masukkan email yang saya nak bagi kejap gini. I'm going to give it to your uh, Thank you, teacher. Okay, teacher. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you. Thank you, teacher. Right, thank you.